Hello and welcome back. It's that United show, Bournemouth Man United tomorrow. News, interesting news this evening about Bruno and Paul Pogba potentially being out of the game. We're going to delve into that a little bit later. Starting off talking about the Jaden Sancho news. I told you yesterday and today, if over the next 10 days, get, get yourself up and get ready for some big, big news surrounding Jaden Sancho. Deal to Man United is almost imminent. It's very close. The club and the player have had discussions again today, and they have reaffirmed, as opposed to agreed, they have reaffirmed the player's interest. They have reaffirmed the contract, the salary, the shirt number. Jaden Sancho to Manchester United is a is genuine. It's real. It is moving forward in Manchester United favour. Get yourselves excited. Before you do that, though, hit the like button, share button, retweet button. We're joined by the boys tonight. JV, Aaron, full of back in the house. How's it going, boys? Yeah, man. Good to yes, be back. Yes. Always, man. Always, man. Back Good in the building. Back. I know. Yes, and it's I know. a nice, happy time to be a Man United fan. Oh, yeah. yes. Definitely. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. We are I mean, this, this, this week's been perfect. If, if we can go out and win tomorrow, then... That rounds up a perfect week, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, it has like like Thursday this time last week. I was feeling depressed and angry, and you know, this is what I say to people: Liverpool winning the league, it is painful, but it's only painful when it happens. A week goes by, you're like, but do you know what I say to all the young boys watching: when the first girl breaks your heart, you are going to feel like you'll never be able to go on. Trust me, <laughs> it goes away. It it goes and. The mad thing is, the girl that broke my heart at 17, I don't even remember her name now. I, I don't remember the girl that broke my heart at 21. I don't remember what she looks like. So, you get where I'm coming from. Like, trust me, the heartache that Liverpool, Liverpool calls is, is dead. It's out of there. Uh, but we'll start off by talking about Jaden Sancho. Duncan Castles has confirmed it. Uh, Fabrizio Romano has not changed his story once since, since February. Personal terms have now been agreed with Manchester United. Again, they're being reaffirmed. He has told Oli, told the club he wants to join. Uh, Aaron, I mean, this this signing is just epic for Man United, if and when it gets pulled off. Absolutely, man. And you know what? <clears throat> At the start, I was like, hmm, I don't really know if that's going to happen, you know, because, you know, because of the price tag. And, but, you know, it's one of them where you see little signs here and there and you start to, you start to think, OK, this, this could potentially happen because... In, in Sancho's case, you're you're seeing, you know, him towards the end of the season with Dortmund. You're thinking, okay, the title's gone. Bayern's won it, but still, you want to get into the Champions League places. You want to finish second at least. But game after game after game, you're seeing Sancho's on the bench. Sancho's not starting. Sancho's coming in for 10, 20 minutes, not really making a difference. You know, me watching the football in Germany, I can hear the commentators saying that his head's not in the game. You can see it. He's, he's not the usual Jaden Sancho that we all know. Like, he's not sharp. He's... You can see his mind is elsewhere. And when you hear that, you're thinking, mm, just, you know, just maybe, maybe. And then what confirmed it for me personally was the last game of the season. Last game of the season. Come on, man. Surely, surely Jaden Sancho has to start. He doesn't start. He's on the bench. To me, that was, that was a significant sign for me that, you know, it's happening. It's definitely happening. It might take some time. It, it, it might go all the way till... I mean, I know the transfer window this season is to the 5th of October, but please don't make it that long, Man United, please. Yeah, don't make it, don't make it that long. <laughs> but I can see this goal, you know, being dragged out. I can see this being dragged out like the Bruno thing, you know, till the end of the uh, uh, summer transfer window and then we're getting it. But hopefully, hopefully, like I said, United, don't drag it out till the end. Please don't do it. Just get him in, make us happy and let's start the season fresh and let's go for it. Uh, just quickly before we jump to the other boys on this, there's a super chat here. It says that Bruno and, and Bruno and uh, Bruno and Pogba talk is fake. It's been confirmed as rubbish. The mirror got it from a parody <coughs> website. Check Twitter. We will check that. If someone's got a link to proving that. We'd love to put it up on the screen. But wouldn't that be peak of the of the mainstream media to yes. for a parody account to post something? And it's are you guys all seen this dude on Twitter? Have you seen this guy? He's a Chelsea fan called Frank Kelly. Yeah, not seen he's a very I don't even know why he's verified. I don't really know what he is, but he's always he's there. He's like great. He says not great news if you're a Man United fan. Man United have been plunged into a potential crisis. That's how they want to. That's, that's how shook. Yeah, and I tweeted earlier, like you know, like a lot of people. You boys have heard this, right? 
Bruno Pogba so overrated. So <laughs> overrated. <laughs> <laughs> it's got penalties and simple tappings. They're they're both they're both injured for it. They're both out at the same time. Celebrate good time. <laughs> Why would you celebrate? That's what I love. People ruin it for mm. themselves. If you really, if you really want to push, if I was pushing a fake narrative that they were overrated, I wouldn't be celebrating now. I'd be like, oh, that's what it's not going to matter because it don't make a difference. The story is straight. But JV, Jaden Sancho agreed personal terms for a second time with Man United. It's very important that after a three month window of no conversations or, or direct conversations, he's confirmed pictures in the red, black, and white. Do you think it's inevitable that he's going to be dawning the seven shirt Old Trafford? I was literally just about to open with that. I was going to literally say to you, is, is this not the answer to the number seven curse? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm saying we like we literally had like, you know what it is? You think about it, we've had all of the Ronaldo replacements, you know what I'm saying? We had Valencia. He didn't have the, you know, skills and the razzle-dazzle, but he had the hard work and he was actually quite a, an effective crosser. <laughs> I had all the razzle-dazzle reference. So <laughs> the razzle-dazzle in it. <laughs> then we had... Yo, then we this, had was, Davey, this, this is another one of your... This is another That's one of your sayings. Like, first you came up with the... What was what was that? The steady oh, Eddie thing. The, yeah, the steady Eddie. <laughs> <steady Eddie. laughs> <laughs> and now you're coming up with this, fam. Yo, the <laughs> razzle-dazzle, man. you got to do it with the hands on it. It's razzle-dazzle. Yeah. You know <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got. You got you, you're a steady Eddie player or you're a rattle dazzle. That's what it is. Yeah, man. There's no in between as well. There's no in between. Yeah. Okay. Yo, and, nah, nah, you know what? I'm lying. There is an in between. It's called a steady dazzle. Yeah. <laughs> That's the in between. A so steady you, dazzle. So let's put this in. So you know that John Henderson is a, is a steady Eddie. And then you got a Bruno or a Pogba would be a rat dazzle. And I look at someone like, say, a McTominay would be a, 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 a how he's in the middle. So what would you, what, what is the saying? A, I would say, steady, it's a in the steady middle. dazzle. I'd say more Fred, yeah. <laughs> more Fred, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fred, 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 you know what I'm saying? We had, bro, we had Michael Owen in the number seven shirt. Do you get what I'm saying? Oh my God. I keep yeah. forgetting that, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But then, what? Obertan, like. <laughs> Do you know, oh, you're all younger, a lot younger than me. I remember when he signed, right? Yes, websites were online, but no one really used the internet to look for football news back then when he signed. But really, you wait every day. I was on holiday, I was in Turkey on holiday when. Owen, all those bands signed, and you got the day papers there like a day. Yeah. So it was a Wednesday morning, you get Tuesday morning's papers. You were that far behind, right? Is the world was bad. I didn't find out Michael Jackson died for like 24 hours. I was actually there at the same time. It was all the same summer. Yeah. When I was in Turkey. I was there for two and a half weeks, and yeah, Jackson died. We sold Ronaldo and we bought Obertan. And I remember Obertan's first interview, and I remember my brothers laughing at me. They're like, Look, you seen, have you seen the big headline? It was a big double page spread, and it says, Basically, I'm Mr. Average, and the sub headline was, "I don't really know why Manny has signed me. I'm pretty average." And I just thought, "Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <he's done." laughs> I know it was, it was Michael Owen. Uh, that, imagine that. Imagine you lose <clears throat> Kevin and Ronaldo, and you bring in Obertan Owen, and, and, and that's just Pete. It's just it's mad, honestly, bro. It's it's crazy. It's that like, shows how long it's been going wrong. For I know, I know. It's literally like. Wrong, like going from a Michael Jackson concert to a Peter Andre concert, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. The levels, the levels are too different in it. There's too much of a gap. You know what I'm saying? And Matt, from your point of view, flawless. You look at Sancho. He's, he's his league record is impeccable. He brings eighty percent of his goal scoring and creative record to Man United with the with, with the source that we're already seeing from the Avengers. What's that going to do to Man United's team? I love how you referenced the Avengers and just kept the conversation moving. That is fantastic. We are pushing that propaganda, first and foremost. Secondly, it's a, I've said this before about Sancho, it's the perfect fit. We need a right winger. The number seven shirt, he's English, so there's no settling in period. And one thing I think people are overlooking with this as well is Sancho has a mega point to prove. Like He's already uh, proved his point by leaving Pep and leaving... Uh, Manchester City and going over to Dortmund and being a success but now he's coming back and it's like he wants to rub it in your face even more so like how mm. pumped up is he going to be for the Manchester derby to prove yes. him wrong and be like yeah. I should be I should be there like I would improve your start and 11 now so it's like it's great to see that it's great to see United moving in this direction and I can't see this signing going wrong 
like at all. Like I'm very shocked. What's uh, this? What does it say? Oh, oh, that's, that is a laugh, not even a comment. Yeah. It's the web. Someone sent me the, the, the link to the to oh, the website. website that it's supposedly okay. been taken from, and it isn't it's even that the, the mirror have been duped by a fake story. I have to show you this. It's beyond. They haven't read the fake story, and this is what yeah. I love. You don't like when you get. I know people don't like fake news. I don't like media outlets that like. Uh, I don't like media outlets that um, fabricate the news. What I love are fake news stories. If you read them, you realize they're fake by reading them. I, mean, I remember once they, they posted the thing mm. on Essex and they were talking about this new road. <coughs> but when you started reading it, it was talking about the road going on the water and people needing oxygen tanks to survive it. And so, like when you got into it, it was so far fetched, you knew it wasn't real. If you read, <laughs> when we read this article here, I'm going to put it down, right? So that looks like a pretty realistic thing, right? And then you go to <laughs> these. They've quoted Ollie. They quote Ollie, and they say, L "Read that. That's me, fucked." <laughs> <laughs> Norwegian old soccer on Sunday. I got. I got a focus wow. on this. I got a focus in. Nah, look, chat, no, look, no, no, look, look on the side. Look at the headlines on the side as well. You realize it's fake. Go up. It says something jokes on the side. Liverpool to be docked fourteen points for breaching COVID nineteen protocols. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you did not read the website. They, they clearly haven't. Look at this. Here. That's me. This is my... old soccer on Sunday. Credit to Ed Woodward. He pre stacked me this morning ahead of the game. <laughs> <Cut to lose. laughs> it's a certainty that I won't be here soon. Gives me the chance to start tipping out uh, my bips and bobs bags. Was low. <laughs> no, said Ollie. Uh, we are when asked if, if Champions League qualification was still achievable, people think we will uh, pull our heads up out of our arses. But, but a pub team without Paul and Pogba, we're a pub team without Bruno. <laughs> To be fair, uh, blah 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 blah, but it, that's what peak. Imagine that, like that. Article, <laughs> I'm, I'm clicking the uh button there, I'm saving it forever. That's the thing, that's and that's what I say. That's not a fake news, that isn't um, like what they did about Man United in the week and the Sancho thing about are oh, we but well, they won't spend above 50 million pounds. That was fabricating a true story, you know. Man United saying next summer we won't pay above 50 mil, that's been fabricated or Chinese whispered. That imagine that. The mirror, they read an oh, they've read the headline. Someone's tweeted the headline and they've picked it up. Oh, wow. Someone's getting yeah, you sacked. Know what? For that. You know what? Someone should get sacked, and that screams desperation. Yep. Like, how desperate are you? For, how desperate are you for a story? And how desperate are you, are you to see Manchester United fail that you would run with that story? Like, check. Exactly. Like, just, just not even check. You know what you should do? Just double check. And you check and then check again. Right. Like, yeah, proofread really it. Yeah, I, I want to know. Pick, I want to like, know. Yeah. If, if this. <clears throat> If this, if these are the type of stories, if these are, are the type of stories that are coming out now, and we're nowhere near the top, I want to know what kind of stories come out once we do get to the top. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, I, yeah, I mean, here's the thing with that: like United, like we've been bad for so long, and yet our fans are still unbearable on social media. I know how unbearable I am. Imagine, bro, imagine. actually get success. Imagine, imagine the success. What the show will be like. <laughs> let, bro, let forget the success. Imagine this season we win the FA Cup and the Europa League. Bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, yo. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Somewhere. Like, yes Liverpool, have won the, yes, Liverpool won the league, but we're going to be unbearable for weeks. Yeah. We are going yeah. to be on their necks on social media. Well, <laughs> literally, we, we could, we could, we, we're going to be so unbearable if we win these two trophies here. We're going to be so unbearable. People are going to forget Liverpool won the league. <laughs> yeah, man, you know what we should do? You know what we should literally, run bro, literally. If it, if we win these two trophies here, yeah, we should just get raw petty like them and just be like, oh, you got one trophy? No, we got two. We got two. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. This is going raw petty like that, isn't it? Like, I had a pound, but my brother had like 22p in coppers, but he had loads more. Like, yeah, but I've got like 12 coins here, bruv. And I'm like, yeah, but yeah. I've got, yeah, got 12 coins. That's, how got <laughs> yeah. That's the level, bro. Equally, though, equally, right? Liverpool were the favourites to me to win the, the, the Premier League this year, in my opinion, and, and definitely second favourites. They were Champions yeah. League winners. They were one of the best teams in the world. And most Liverpool fans were talking about this in the build-up to the season. Oh, we're the best team in the world now, they were saying at the end of last year. So then going on to win one trophy, but Man United that were called a mid-table team with a PE teacher at best who bought an overrated Maguire, a, a, a fullback that can't attack, a nobody Welsh choir boy from the championship and Bruno that no other top team in Europe wanted. If we go on to secure top four, if not third place, slap up bare top six sides this season and win two <laughs> trophies, that's the most, that, that, that's the best season. 
Because, yeah. we, hang on, you said we're a mid-table pub team, but yet we've won two trophies and got into the top four. That's overachieving. Liverpool winning the league isn't an overachievement if they were supposedly the best team in the world. Remember your narratives, you punk-ass motherfuckers. Remember your narratives. <laughs> <laughs> I don't create the narrative. I just, you know, I didn't start the game. You know, don't blame the, don't play, don't blame the player playing the game here. You want to set the narrative out that we're trash. If we go on to do two trophies and top four this season with a pub team manager, average players, slaphead at the back, you know, and that's it. <laughs> Trashford, Trashford. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Then what? You know what I mean? What? Andre Avengers, P. Man. Avengers, man. That's what it is. Them Avengers different. I mean, like when they turn up, Avengers different. Like we're going to win in the end. We're going to get there. Exactly. Uh, thank you for the super chat, by the way, Zane. I didn't actually read it out loud. What, what's Zane saying here? Zane says, watch oh. Arsenal Masterclass tomorrow. Kevin De Bruyne Masterclass. Bruno Pogba only does it in that 10% of games. De Bruyne, future Ballon d'Or. I mean, the end of the story I don't care about Ballon d'Or at all. Like, One I second. really don't care about Ballon d'Or. Man, I say yeah, De Bruyne, a future to... Ballon d'Or. in like 29, 30. You <laughs> <laughs> so, ain't got that much of a future know, life, bro. I mean, like, the, the ball- <laughs> you know is, yeah, <clears throat> for me, the Ballon d'Or became dead to me once it started to become like a um once i saw that it started to become like a popularity contest and in at one point it even became a, a thing where it's, it was just like oh whoever scores the most goals let, let's just let's just give them the ballon d'or like it was you you guys have seen you know the, the injustice and in, the injustice sorry in um in the ballon d'or running do you know what i mean like the year where iniesta should have won it because he won the world cup scored a winning goal do you know what i mean Messi got it because he scored 90 odd goals. Now I'm not, you know, I'm not saying it's, it's it's not good. It is incredible what Messi's done, but come on, man. Like the the man just won a World Cup for his country. Do you know what I mean? 2012. How many more trophies could Ribery have won? He won mm. everything. He won mm. uh, sorry, 2013. How many more trophies could, could he have won? Do you know what I mean? He won everything with Bayern. Everything, literally. Still didn't get the Ballon d'Or. And to make things worse, he came third. In the Ballon d'Or top three, he came yeah. third. The thing of it is, it's all, it's all become about popularity, even more so yeah. social media, because it's this element of they know that you know there's so much advert. You know, if Messi and Ronaldo weren't in the running for it, they're tens of millions, and in Ronaldo's case, hundreds of millions of followers across social media platforms would mm. be less interested. And it's why I think you go for the Premier League era. You had years where United were winning doubles and trebles and, and winning three three Premier Leagues over a four, three or four year period. And you went to the team of the year. Often we'd only have two or three people in it. And you're sitting there going, yeah. the reason you did that is because you had to keep rivals interested when they weren't winning anything. Do you get exactly. what I'm coming? Oh, you know what? We're going to have to throw three or four Liverpool players in here. Otherwise, Liverpool fans will feel disenfranchised. And we need to keep them on point with the brand. And that's all the Ballon d'Or have done. And for me, I don't take any real award seriously anymore. When you, which, you know, <coughs> four writers, they go for their little bias patches. But the, the one that, for me, player of the year, PFA, all those ones, I don't take them seriously anymore. I've watched so many interviews where players talk about the nonsense they get up to. I watched one, an interview just yesterday where this guy's like, yeah, what he did every year when he nominated his player of the year, he just wrote Pele. And sent it back in, like as well. <laughs> and he said his teammates did as well. Uh, another comment here from Zane. He says, "Terry, you waited a billion and have Frodo Baggins at the helm. What have you won? United fans are jealous of De Bruyne." Boy, let me ask you this question, boy. Are you, and we all know De Bruyne's amazing. We know that. But would yep. you right now, if someone said to you swap De Bruyne for Bruno or Pogba, would any of you actually do it? No, I wouldn't do it because. Nope. I, I think Pub was better. And two, it's like, right, I'm petty, in it? Like, he plays for City. Yes, he's cold. Like, we all know how good he is, but that black mark against him will always always be because he plays for Manchester City. Like, One second, is time... brother an Arsenal fan? Yeah, he is, he is. Yeah. But so let, let me... wash, see, wash. see this comment, see this comment, yeah. <laughs> uh, but they score... With, winning the World Cup doesn't mean that you're the best in the world. Uh, Messi and Ronaldo will never win the World Cup. They score 50 goals a season. Who else does that? Yeah, but bro... We already have like 125 awards for scoring a lot of goals in the world. There's there's already 50 trophies for that. You can get those. But the Ballon d'Or is supposed to be, for me, as far as I'm concerned, about trophies, what you've done with your club and your country. For me, that's that's what it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yes, you know, Ribéry um, that, that year didn't really do bits with France, but in 2012 Euros, but with Bayern, he won everything. I, I'll say it again, he won everything. I, I don't know what else he could have won. And mm-hmm. you're saying that winning the World Cup doesn't mean you are the best. Are you kidding me? 
Winning the World Cup is the most prestigious thing you could ever win in your entire career. Winning a World Cup is not given to everyone. Do you know why you know you're saying that? Go on, JV. Go on, go on. Do you know why you're saying that? Mm -hmm. I've, I've noticed since Pogba won the World Cup, it, it become a, le a little less prestigious to certain fans, didn't it? Mm 